Crashing the Party of Lincoln by Joel Schlossberg, published September 23, 2014. Heather Cox Richardson's call to bring back the Party of Lincoln in the New York Times, published September 3, based on her forthcoming book to make men free: A History of the Republican Party, demands a package deal that not only never was, but could never be. In Richardson's fantasy, the Republican Party, before the ascendance of Reagan, opposed the control of government by an elite in favor of broader economic opportunity. Although it was marked by vacillation between its founding principle of opportunity and its domination by the wealthy elite, the former prevailed when. Per Jonathan Chait's summary of Richardson's thesis in New York Magazine on September 9th, it was the moderate, non-anti-government party of Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, and Eisenhower. The latter, when it was well, non-non-anti-government. A closer look at the party's history, instead. Corroborates Kevin Carson's assessment that from its inception, the Republican Party is the direct heir to a long line of Hamiltonians, all seeking to use state power to promote the interests of the plutocracy and the wealthiest and most powerful business people at the expense of working people. Richardson writes that the GOP was formed in opposition to the wealthy slaveholders. Implying an opposition to a wealthy elite per se, but the party always aimed merely to replace the slave owners' economic elite with its own Hamiltonian industrial elite. The Civil War was the fountainhead of the alliance between the military and a politically concerned elite that Eisenhower called the military-industrial complex. Richardson similarly elides and distorts the historical record to depict plutocracy as anti-statist. Reconstruction ended when Republicans faced a racist and xenophobic backlash against an active government, and they folded, rather than by the party's already dominant plutocratic tendency colluding with its natural ally, its counterpart in the Democrats. The ensuing Gilded Age is seen as laissez-faire, an interpretation long thoroughly demolished by new leftists Gabriel Koko and James Weinstein. Breaking with laissez-faire, Theodore Roosevelt protected workers and regulated business, whereas Jim Powell notes Roosevelt supported high tariffs, which helped politically connected business interests by suppressing competition, so that. There would have been more competition had Theodore Roosevelt focused on lowering tariffs and repealing corporate privileges. Richardson depicts the 1920s as a period where, again, the party folded. During the ensuing backlash against government activism, Republican leaders handed policymaking to businessmen. Thus, Warren G. Harding, who got Eugene V. Debs out of jail, is conflated with the Red Scare liberals who put him in jail in the first place, as well as with the Herbert Hoover, who was actually the precursor of the entire New Deal system, as socialist Ronald Randosh and capitalists Murray Rothbard jointly noted. Richardson's Eisenhower used activist government to promote economic equality around the world, a malaprop summation of a foreign policy that included backing coups in Iran and Guatemala. Meanwhile, his domestic policy inspired the wrath of businessmen with the very programs that created the mindset that what was good for General Motors coincided with what was good for the country. Richardson's inventory of ostensibly populist programs, public education, the transcontinental railroad, the interstate highway system, all epitomize Hamiltonian subsidy to capital-intensive industries for which the public 
inevitably foots the bill. Lincoln himself objected to the idea that nobody labors unless somebody else owning capital somehow, by the use of it, induces him to labor. A reclaiming of Lincoln's aim to secure to each laborer the whole product of his labor as nearly as possible in modern times requires demolishing Hamiltonian props for capital profits. European anarcho-syndicalist Rudolf Rocker noted that Lincoln had little respect for professional politicians, and thus he would not entrust, therefore, the rights of the people to any government, for he knew that their leaders were always moved by special interests. Free markets are the way to free soil. That was Crashing the Party of Lincoln, written by Joel Schlossberg and read by Christopher B. King. You've been listening to Feed 44, the official podcast channel of the Center for a Stateless Society. C4SS is an anarchist think tank and media center. For more information, please visit c4ss.org.